From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Well, things are kicking into high gear. An announcement out today about the future of indoor football in Billings. A movie crew is storming into our area to begin filming with Alec Baldwin, and the crew is looking for extras to help. Also ahead, a new Q2 segment called Flyover Friday. Can you guess where this shot was captured? Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your Friday. I'm Janelle Slade. We'll we begin tonight with our top story, which is hot weather. Q2 meteorologist Ed McIntosh is in the Weather Center tracking the big three. Ed. The big three, when we get to weather like this, is heat, humidity, and wind. So let's right. take a look and see what's going on. These are the current things that are happening across the area. You can already see cooler air moving into northwest Montana and even a few showers, but check out the eastern plains where the temperatures are still into the 80s here as of this hour. That cloud cover is going to start to make a change here. Check out the humidity numbers only in the teens to 20s on a hot summer afternoon when we're talking 90s and even triple digits. We would say these are low numbers, so there's virtually very little moisture to work with in the atmosphere and then add in all of that wind across the region, especially once we get north of Billings across the eastern plains, some of those wind gusts hitting 35 to 40 miles an hour. And already that's increased our fire risk across the region. So we'll look at how that's already started to affect us with wildfires and how we'll start to see some changes for the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, a new movie is about to start shooting in and around the Billings area. It's called Supercell, and it's about a son following his father's footsteps as a storm chaser. Q2's movie-loving weatherman Chris DeRose has more on Hollywood coming to town. The last major motion picture to film in Billings was the critically acclaimed movie Nebraska back in 2012. Other great movies have called Southern Montana home, including Robert Redford's A River Runs Through It and Ron Howard's Far and Away. And in every Montana film, the landscape seems to play a crucial role. That's one reason why producer Nathan Klinger says the new movie Supercell chose to film here. The production value you get shooting in Montana on location is unrivaled. You point the camera and shoot and you're getting just value out of just this, the vistas that you're seeing. Supercell has the feel of a modern day twister, arguably one of the greatest weather disaster movies of all time. This story, however, centers around a young storm chaser trying to follow in his father's footsteps tracking major storms. Academy Award nominee and Emmy winner Alec Baldwin leads the cast, and the film is written and directed by former storm chaser James Winterstern. He had, it's interesting, he had spent two years storm chasing all across the, the plains, right? So he has a very tight-knit community in the, amongst storm chasers that he knows really well and he's leaned on for advice about production, uh, for, but how to get this stuff, execute the vision, really. A few decades ago, film production in Montana was relatively small, but a few years ago, all that started to change. I spoke with Montana Film Commissioner Allison Whitmer, who explains that because of tax incentives, a lot of filmmakers are coming to shoot in Montana and are generating a lot of money into the local economy. Well, during 2019 and most of 2020, we've calculated with our research report that we've had about a $47, $48 million impact in the state. And we are certainly hoping to continue that. We've been able to put filmmakers in every corner of Montana, and we'd like to see that maintain. They come with cash in hand, and they hire people, and they stay in hotels, and they rent cars, and they distribute their money into all levels of your local economy. Um, films have rented broken bricks, they've replaced windows, they've rented your local diner, they've bought teepees, they've rented horses. They have rented your home, they've rented your vintage car. And so they come in with money and they spread it through all the community. And then you get to see the final product in the theaters later. Supercell is still in pre-production at the moment, but Nathan says everyone is looking forward to cameras rolling in early May. I think that, you know, for me, it's really exciting to be in Montana. I mean, I was looking forward to coming out here for this shoot. It's, it's exceeded my expectations in terms of what the, the community's offering and what the locale and the look of the area is offering. And I'm 
you know, I'm excited to get to work and start shooting this movie with, you know, the rest of the team. Reporting in Billings, Chris DeRose, MTN News. Thanks so much, Chris. Now, if you would like to take part in the film, the production is looking to fill a variety of background roles, especially those of storm chasers with unique looking vehicles. Now, if you or anyone you know is interested, please email a recent photo, resume, and availability to supercellextras at gmail.com. And for more information on this film, head to ktvq.com. Well, Montana's governor and Republican legislative leaders gathered today to wrap up the 67th legislative session. MTN's Jonathan Amberian has more on what they outlined as their top achievements. Governor Greg Gianforte said when he took office that he wanted to get Montana moving again. And he said Friday that the legislature had taken important steps toward that goal. Gianforte held a news conference with the Republican leadership of the House and Senate to highlight what the session accomplished over the last four months. This was the first session in 16 years that a Republican was in the governor's office, and the Republican majorities in both houses saw it as an opportunity to achieve some of their long-held priorities. Gianforte said he was proud of the budget lawmakers produced, with limited spending increases and large income and property tax reductions. Ultimately, we're creating an environment where Montana is more competitive, where businesses can grow, thrive, and create more good-paying Montana jobs. Leaders also pointed to a variety of other proposals that passed through the legislature, from expanding broadband connectivity across the state, to encouraging trades education and higher teacher pay, to lifting regulations to provide more flexibility in health care, to the expansion of concealed carry, and the signing of three bills regulating abortion. I think we will all walk out of here with our heads held high of what we did this session, and these accomplishments will move Montana forward for many years to come. Democrats, the minority in both houses, were critical of the majority. They argued the tax proposals favored the wealthy, and that Republicans spent too much time on an investigation of the judiciary. But they also saw positives to point to. I also think that we were good partners to y'all, where we did agree. And I think on health care, on infrastructure, on education, on bolstering the workforce, in job training, we showed up, we worked with you, and I think we made those policies better. As of Friday afternoon, more than 300 bills had passed the legislature and were now on their way to the governor's desk. Gianforte generally wouldn't give specific indications of his plans for those bills, but he said he will carefully consider all of them. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Now tune into this weekend's Face the State Sunday morning. That's at 8 a.m. for more analysis on the 67th session. You can also catch the show on Saturday by downloading the KTVQ app on your Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Google Play streaming device. Well, the Great American Cleanup is kicking off, and a big beginning part of that played out last night. Q2's David J was at Senior High for the kickoff. Make sure you get your T-shirts. Safety first! Senior high school students launch Keep Senior Beautiful. I'm glad we're able to do this project and get students more involved. And I just think it's, it's an important event to show our Bronx pride by keeping our school clean and the surrounding community. We know that sometimes living next to a school isn't always easy. And so we just want to get back out into the community and pick up after ourselves and show them that Bronx Nation loves our community because we want our community to love Bronx Nation. The high school pilot project is part of Bright and Beautiful, the Billings affiliate of Keep America Beautiful. We were noticing this passion among teenagers for cleaning up the environment, and we thought there ought to be a way for us to tap into that youthful exuberance. The students are all over the campus, Dela Stadium, Pioneer Park, and into the neighborhood. And it's more than just picking up trash. They get a lot of learnings out of the Keep Senior Beautiful project. If we can get our kids to be civic-minded and community-minded now, great things are going to happen. They learn to be responsible citizens. They take what they learn from an experience like this and bring it home and become better neighbors. You know, we've got that rivalry going on. It's not just football and basketball. It's also in the litter cleanup game. Definitely an honor that Senior was selected to pilot this project. Hopefully we can inspire other schools to do the same. In Billings, David J, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, David. Now nearly 170 students took part in last night's event. Joni Tooley says she hopes to get West and Skyview involved next spring.
Well, up next on tonight's MTN 530 News right here on Q2, an interview with two veterans who reflect back on the beginning of the end of the war in Afghanistan. Keep it here.